Hello, beautiful divine souls. Welcome back to Goddess of Rebirth or Goddess Unleashed, the show where we explore stories of innovators, change makers, and leaders making a difference in our world today. I'm your host, Monica, and in today's episode, we're exploring the intersection of technology, marketing, and women's empowerment with a very special guest. Today, we're joined by Stell, a trailblazer in the field of digital and innovation marketing in China. Stell's work is not just about pushing the boundaries of what's possible in the digital realm. It's about leveraging these advancements to empower women, bridge gaps, and create a more inclusive society. In a world where technology shapes everything from the way we communicate to how we do business, Stells has, has carved out a niche that not only promotes innovation, but ensures that these innovations reach and uplift women across the globe. Stell's contributions are helping to shape a future where women are not just participants, but leading forces in the digital age. So, Stell, welcome. How are you? Oh, thank you, Monica. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me today. It is my honor to have this conversation with you. Um, tell us a little bit of who are you? What do you do? Tell us just a little bit of your story. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, the pleasure is mine. So um, I'm Estelle. I'm actually working as a digital marketer for the past 15 years. So when when I was a kid, I actually still, I just believe I'm a feminist since I was a kid. And then when I joined the industry, I actually have a like big dream. I wanted to do some social norm campaigns, which can shape the future and inspire more women. So that's my dream when I joined the advertising industry. And now I do see the opportunities in the digital marketing because, you know, the conversation, the dialogue has changed. Because at, at the beginning, the advertising will be more like a one way, like the brand talk, tell you what to do, or they offer you like better products and the better services to improve your lives. But through the digital marketing, it's like two ways. We created a dialogue and a conversation with brands. So we can use our influence on the social medias to influence the product, the brand. So that is why I'm very excited when I graduated from the university, I joined this advertising marketing. And then I think I'm quite lucky because through the past 15 years, actually it's the fast moving digital era for, I think not only for the whole world, especially in China's. So we also try lots of different campaigns using new tools and technologies. So basically, that's what I'm doing at the moment. That is so amazing. And you are totally right. This was like the, the greatest improvement era where technology is just like really, really changing our lives. So mm -hmm. my question for you, my first question for you, Stel, is could you tell us about your journey into the field of digital marketing and innovation and what inspired you specifically to focus on helping women? You mentioned that when you were younger, you, you dreamed about being a feminist. Was there something else in there that you probably saw that inspired you to feel that way? Um, yes, actually, I think because when I was a kid, I... I have a very good experience with like lots of like great women in my life. My moms, my grandma, and then um, my teachers, they are all great women. But the thing is like, I think the whole, uh, um, how do you say, the whole society, they did give them the enough opportunity or attention to improve their talents, especially for like, say, uh, my teachers, they are very talented women, but they don't really have the chance to take to the higher leadership positions. So as you will see um, in China, like mostly I saw the higher leadership, not only in the companies, in the schools, public um, like bureaucracy, this kind of place is, is all dominated by men. So I just, I couldn't help wondering why women cannot take the higher position because I've received lots of kindness and, and then inspirations from women, but it's just like they don't really, how to say, receive the respect they should have. 
So that is why I'm thinking about if we can like using any tools, like marketing is one of the tools I'm, I can think about is to inspire more women. And then we can all together, I think maybe we, we can create a more equal world, become a better place. I, I agree completely with that. And I, I do feel like that's a challenge that we all still need to work on overcoming. Um, mm-hmm. And I find a lot of inspiration for the future in what you're sharing, having women who are already envisioning that opportunity to open up for everybody. Um, Stel, what are some of the biggest challenges that you have faced while working to empower women through digital marketing and innovation? Honestly speaking, after like 15 years working in this industry, I do feel, um, let's go back to the very basic, it's the mindset. It's, it's the mindset. Let's say um, we are doing the like advertising. So that will be some stereotype. Let's say we are doing the laundry part. We are selling the detergents. They always like women wash the clothes. It's kind of like, because how does, how to say that's the product for everyone because everyone needs to wash clothes. But why they always put women in in the commercials? Say, uh, because she think that's the better product, and then she become their like ambassador. So that will be like stereotype. Another part. Let me take an example. Let's say you always see the um, TV commercials. See a man driving a cars. But nowadays, I think it's getting better and better because nowadays you will see they will doing two different commercial wines for men and the men driving cars and that is for the female um customers so that is that is why they will introduce a female actress to doing the driving cars part so that's the situation has been improved but at the how to say after five years ago it's still very dominant by the men they are driving cars they are taking they are behind the wheels they are doing the adventures but not women so this part is kind of missing but we are also like living this world, we also wanted to experience lots of new adventures. The, the whole mindset needs to be changed. I'm aware that this is not only happening in the digital, digital marketing um, field, but it's also affecting the medical field. Like mm-hmm. they test medicines and I don't know, like all the things that are related to, to the medical field are usually tested, proved in male's bodies. And mm-hmm. we don't really know what's the impact on a female body because it's only being tested on a male um, body. I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of many other examples where this is um, inequality and this lack of diversity and inclusion is also happening. And I, what I really like about what you were saying is how you're aware now. Because you, in your work, you might be given this task and you're like, okay, that's what the client wants. I'm going to do it. Like, the way they want it but now that you're aware of it you have power and you're like wait wait a minute i'm gonna question that why is it this way and why what's the impact of portraying this image and that's a really really powerful position it's when you go back to your power and say like this doesn't seem right why you start questioning i love that part i feel like younger people need to gain that power again, the, the curiosity, the questioning, the, is it really good for all of us? Is it inclusive? Is it equal or not? Is it only being done that way because that's the way we were told? Truly, I agree with you. Um, we used to do a promotion for a vacuum cleaner. So when they develop this product, because they introduce, uh, they actually bring us to the I think to the uh, research development lab to meet their engineers. So when the engineers, like um, they are telling us how they design the products, how they test the product, how they collect the data. And we actually realize it's the engineer they are using the product and not the real person. So you see the difference. So that that is why we think um, for our normal people, I say, especially for lots of the women, we are... Sadly to say, um, we actually did a 90% of the housework at home. So the product is not easy. To, it's not use friendly. We have to like speak very, how to say, um, very bluntly to them. Say your engineer using the product is not the normal people. You should include the real person who's using this product every day to tell you which the real data is. 
because the product is not very easy to use. It doesn't really matter how fancy your campaign are. It just, if you wanted to sell, uh, if, if you wanted to reach the better sales, you have to use the real person. So that is why um, we are thinking, because when we entering this kind of like design process, so we, we think it's the time we can, we should speak, speak up and to tell the team, make the change. Well, that's the thing that many people will will say like, why why are you questioning it? Like you're making it too complicated. No, actually, we're benefiting the companies. Mm -hmm. We're benefiting also the people who use the services or the product because it's not designed for them. Yeah. So it's not a it's not a questioning because I want to be difficult. It's a questioning because I want to make an improvement for both parties. Still, my next question for you is, in an ideal world, what changes would you like to see in how women are represented and participate in the digital and innovation sectors? In the ideal world, I, I actually do hope there will be more women leadership in all the aspects, not only in the digital world, because um, I think it's through all the aspects right from the, at the beginning, like development research part and then for the company they need to be in the higher position to um how to say to make the changes because honestly speaking when we are doing the marketing we're always talking about the budgets the budgets always coming from the higher management so if we will have more female leadership they will have like bigger and longer visions so they will invest in the right project and then we also need lots of um women to join their digital world it's not so scary because every time when i'm talking about digital marketing everything everyone will think oh it's very far away from me but actually every day you are using your phone so you are also involved in you are digital savvy in the digital world because every time we actually wanted to influence you as a consumer so it's for me it's like the idea world is we will see more and more women into every aspect and they are not afraid to speak up it could also be that perhaps I'm thinking about like younger women, but it could be that they haven't seen female representation, you know, like in, in, in very specific fields, we only see male representing the majority. So we sometimes, and I'm thinking about like younger people, sometimes we might think like, oh no, that's a job for the boys. That's something that women usually will not, uh, let's say uh, uh, an example that comes to my mind is, uh, space exploration, mm -hmm. going out to outer space. It's usually when I was younger, we had this like mindset, oh, that's for the boys. Like girls don't go out. Girls <laughs> don't go out. We, we, we stay home. But the reason why we thought that way was because it was, we didn't have any female representation going to outer space and building spacecraft. And if there were, because there were many female um, scientists doing great contributions for space exploration, but we were not aware of it because on the textbooks, you only see the male represented mm -hmm. in the story. So I do feel like having female stories and female models and female representation of people doing this job, that job, in this area, in that area, in all areas, that's so valuable, so important. That is why we need more and more like bloggers like you are to tell more women there's actually no rules for the the all, all these kind of occupations so you can be everyone you can be everything you if you wanted to be you even can be the president no one says no yeah. mm -hmm. totally that's the ideal world for sure <laughs> yeah. um Still, what advice will you give to young women aspiring to enter the field of digital marketing and innovation, or even to work with technology in general? The first thing coming up to my mind is to speak up for yourself, because there are no limitations. I think I'm quite lucky because I was working for lots of multinational advertising companies. Uh, every time when I join the company, they will have their like um, gender equality training. So. They will always encourage you if you wanted to like do something, if you want to learn something new, there will always a platform in the company that you can apply for. So if you want something, you don't have to scare it. You just search the course on within the company like resource and then speak up for yourself to tell your supervisor you wanted to do this. And then they will give you 
the opportunity. If you don't just keep silent, no one knows. No one knows your dream. You just just have to need, first have to speak up. And then I think the second is you have to tell the boundaries. Let's say if during the like, um, how do you say? Because when I was working for the digital marketing, the team I'm working with is for the whole like uh, programmers. They are like 90% they are um, male. So they don't really, how to say, good at like human communication. They are very good at it to talk to the computers, but they don't really do the conversation well or they don't really understand people totally. So for that part, you just tell them what exactly you need and then you set up the boundaries. If they are saying something very offensive, you just speak up for yourself and then set up the boundaries. They will do respect. So don't be afraid to set a boundaries to others. We're so trained to believe that somebody else's path is success and mm -hmm. we have different skills, different ways of doing things. And because we don't fit into that path of success, then we disqualify ourselves and we undervalue our own skills and our own uniqueness. We don't value it because it doesn't fit, you know, like the path to success that we know. But something that um, came to my mind as you were speaking is, as you're speaking for yourself, just also learn to value yourself for who you are or the contribution that you make. But it's extremely important, even if no one's doing it the way you're doing it, even if no one's thinking the way you're thinking, what you're bringing is so, so valuable and it's going to impact the world in a way that you don't even mm -hmm. know because no one is doing it that way. So always be brave, courageous, and go for it with pride for being who you are. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, I remember there was very interesting things happening. Uh, like three years ago, is like um, I have two uh, assistants who's doing the same project. One is a uh, is a very lovely girl, and another is is a boy. And then after like the project completed, actually the boy asked for promotion. He said, um, I need to, Esther, I need to talk to you. I, I think I'm doing great. I did a great job. I need a promotion for this project. But honestly speaking, based on the performance, actually the girls is she, her performance is much better than the boy did, but she just too shy. And then she didn't ask for anything. She still, every time when I do the yearly review with her, she still thinks she's not like good enough to be there to, to, Add this position. Every time, I, so that is why I think maybe it's just different mindset. If you value yourself, you value your effort. So just like a boy, why don't you just ask for it? If even though maybe uh, after the performance review, I think he's not qualified, but I actually very appreciate he's asking instead of keep silent or think you are not worth it. Yeah, totally. And I had a conversation with. Um, Another person who works at leadership at a big company, and she said she actually gave me an example that was so similar to what to what you just shared. Um, she said that in a in a company, when you're at a leadership position, men will always talk about their achievements, and they will come mm -hmm. and like, "Oh yeah, I did this, I did that." Like they feel that confidence and that permission to speak about what they're achieving and doing but the women in the same position of leadership they will not they will not because women have this tendency to think that they should be a little bit more quiet more reserved like you don't want to you don't want to be too much you don't want to be too loud because they are socially not seen as someone who can speak up for themselves they have to be more you know like mother and more a little bit like mm, humble, I want to say. But the mm -hmm. truth is, and she was telling me like the research, the data shows that if you want to move in the company, you have you want to have a promotion, you need to show off. You need to tell the people like, look, look at my work. Look, look what I have achieved. Look how good I am. If you don't do that, you will never really get more. Yes, exactly. I actually can't agree more because in a very competitive environment, you have to speak up for yourselves. Otherwise, no one will speak up for you, especially 
I think because when I had a competition with the assistants, she always thinking, uh, if I work hard enough, my boss will notice me. But unfortunately, the the harsh truth is everyone's so busy. No one really will notice somebody because everyone's very busy with their own work. If you don't speak up and give yourself the opportunity, you might just lost it. Because everyone is like, you know, because in the advertising industry, it's very competitive. When I was doing different like digital projects, I always the first one, I told my boss, I wanted to make a try. Even though maybe it didn't work, but it's not my only my own responsibility. I don't really fear to fail. I just wanted to try. Yeah, yeah. We need to amplify female voices. It needs to become more normal. We need to normalize it for sure. Yeah. Still, my last question for you is, how has your work in your field of expertise shaped your views on women's empowerment and gender equality? I think I'm I'm actually quite lucky because during um, the past 15 years, I have the honor to working with lots of like um, excellent female leadership and also uh, female programmers and project managers. So that is why. So far now, I'm still like have huge passion in this industry because I see the tendency that's getting better as more and more women, they are joined to this world because I think everyone is now is realized it's AI now is coming to the reality. So that is why we wanted to see more and more women to join this like digital beast. So everyone, we can like have our own like territory to work with. Because I'm very excited to see um, become because AI now they can program by itself, right? If so, that is why you don't have to learn this kind of like a boring computer language. If you are very good, like an uh, innovator or storyteller, you can make your own film and you can make your own product and then using the AI as your assistant. So there's no limits for you. I think that's why I'm very like excited to see this whole new world. And I, also welcome more and more women to join this fancy world and we can create our own careers, maybe new careers for the like next 10 and 15 years. Can you imagine a world where humans grow up without thinking that they have this limitation, that limitation? It's, it's going to be mind blowing to see people creating what they ambition and imagine it's just gonna be so beautiful i i'm excited mm -hmm. that is something that excites me a lot um still is there any last piece of advice or anything that you would like to share to close this episode mm, well first of all i am very honored to join this episode and then i hope my story, like my personal story, will inspire, uh, will bring inspiration to more young girls, especially young women. I really do hope um, we don't have to like live in the box. Let's every time if you wanted to do something, there are actually no limitations. So don't limit yourself. And then, as we just mentioned, and then don't be too humble because if you too humble, you hide yourself. No one will find you. The world is so huge, so you have to be outstanding. And then to let people, at least let people see you. I think that's maybe the first step we're going to make. And then um, I think the last thing is don't, don't be afraid to express yourself in any ways. Because nowadays we're in the social media. If you see someone or see something make you uncomfortable, just speak up. And then to share your opinion. Don't hide away. And then don't be shy. Because I think every word counts in the internet. So if you wanted to make huge influence, we have to show, like say our opinion out loud to let people see us and know us or and understand us. Women need to knock more doors, you know, like mm -hmm. that in the past we believe like, no, that's that's not gonna happen. That's not that's not gonna be for me. It will be for you. And you have to dare yourself to knock that door. So mm -hmm. I love your your inspiration, your insights. Still. We're going to wrap up this thought-provoking episode, and I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful that you join us today and that you share your incredible journey and that your insights are taking us into a new world, the world of digital and innovation marketing. To our listeners, we hope that today's conversation has ignited a spark within you. Whether you're 
in the tech industry or looking to make a difference in your community or simply inspired by sales story, remember that change begins from the inside and within. The future is digital and it's inclusive and each of us has a role to play in shaping it. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on Shimalaya or YouTube to stay updated on our latest episodes. We will love to hear your thoughts on today's episode and you can reach out to us on social media. Thank you for tuning in and until next time. I am thrilled to have you in my circle and I am buzzing with excitement to conjure up some magic together. Remember, in Goddess Unleash, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the mystical walk. Tune in and transform with me. Until next time, keep your spirits high and your magic untamed.